Thank you very much. You disclosed that it is a very new piece for you that you were barely practicing for several weeks. For this, your level, I think, is already outstanding. And let me show you some details that would make this piece even richer of emotions. I don't have to tell you about how emotional this piece is and how emotional it gets for everyone who has ever played it, had to struggle with it. And then also these emotions, they are something that the audience really adores. It is not, um, it is not a big surprise that so many pianists, most famously, I think, uh, Vladimir Horowitz has performed okay. this at uh, one of his encores, maybe even sometimes the very first encore of the concert, because he knew how important it is to always keep the audience excited. What I, uh, what I noticed right away from the beginning of your performance is that sometimes you are allowing yourself to split the octaves between the left and right hand. I don't know whether your edition says that to you or it is your own initiative, but I would really ask you to not do this. And why? First of all is because if you have to jump with octaves, it is harder for you to play. It is definitely more hard for you to play. And this hardness, this not knowing whether you can manage to make that jump or cannot manage, it is also part of the emotion. You feel excited. You know, there are some, um, the most important, I guess, the most good example is the Opus 111 uh, by Beethoven that starts, I think it's this way. You have two jumps of the octaves right away in the beginning. And every pianist knows that something may crack. Something may happen if you are not prepared for this. So from your emotion, from your within, you are already ready that it's not going to be comfortable and you sound a different way rather than you would play it, which is completely comfortable. Okay. So for this reason alone, I want you to alter the 
it's all, only those things in the squad that you really do not manage to play. Obviously, you are a very skillful performer already, so all of these objects are not going to make any big problems for you, but they would make sufficient problems to make this piece sound like you're always afraid. Mm -hmm. Maybe we will take that as a symbol of what Scrabble wanted this piece to sound like, of constantly being afraid and having to fight. Okay. So, that is the first example. The second thing is, every time when you are playing those runs in an octave, so you must aim to make them even faster. Because with this you also gain more emotion that you would gain if you would just play it in, let's say, an acceptable, a normal tempo. It doesn't get you excited. I'm really excited, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> that is good to know. But get me more excited about them too. With making those octaves a little bit faster, a little bit sharper, and also with a bigger crescendo going upwards. Okay, let us start from the beginning and I would then stop you on demand when I have something again to comment on. So, uh, I love, I uh, will be playing just with two, the octave with two hands and then I will uh, correct this is not This is not something that you can really do now in, in a span of just one minute. I know, I appreciate that, but you will be as good as perfect with this after three or four days of practicing, believe me. But now just play the way you played. Okay. <laughs> Yes, and then right immediately. Yes, exactly. The second time now. Again, try not to exaggerate. Like a trumpet solo. Yes! This is what he writes with his very, very short note here. Pa -pam. It is this kind of attack. Continue. And just like in a revolutionary etude where we would have the endings of the emotional lines, I also suggest for you to make diminuendos, just to get the audience a little bit off the constant forte. So, one of those diminuendos is very good to do here. It even sounds like a revolutionary etude. Don't allow me to quote on that right now because I haven't really ever performed it. Okay. But this is something where you can release a little bit of the tension just to power it up again. Again. And so on. You see, you're always aiming to go up and up and up and then you always return back. It is a little bit like the Sisyphus work when he is trying to get up the mountain just to always get decreased again. We can also take that as a symbol of a constant struggle without an obvious result. Who are the romantical people without a struggle? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So it's this fire that burns in you and says, I want to achieve this. And then let's say the society says you can't. I want to achieve. No, I can't. Crescendo diminuendo, and all the time the ever faster attacker. Okay? okay? So, uh, before we play further, I want you to see also how important is the waving inside of the left hand. What he writes here, it is also a very important melodic um, way of expressing the emotions. All the time he is going up, and from down he is again going up. All of those little melodies when you would play them with even more expressivity, they would boil the turmoil inside of, uh, inside of your emotional state. So when you have... Right, so always aim to make bigger crescendo into the first finger. This is what we always do in the 
second uh, concerto by Rafanino. <laughs> on their loudest note as an expression of the very big emotion that is burning inside of us. So I would do the very same thing all the time. <laughs> Bravo, bravo, continue. I wanted to hear that D sharp now. No? It's a... It's a D sharp. Here. No? D sharp. Ready, yes. Because I noticed this because it's a very important melodic line from G sharp where you are now to go to the D sharp. It makes the fifth. Sorry to interrupt you, but I just really want you to play the right intervals between those highest notes because they make so much sense. When you go from G sharp to D sharp and back to G sharp just to go even further to the E. You see, it's a melody on its own. It's like what we call the secret polyphony. Very, very good right now. You see, just look at what the thump is playing because you can entertain the audience very well with just extracting those little melodies like a middle voice. You know, both Rachmaninoff and Scrabin, they are very famous for being very inventive with their middle voices. So you can use this at particular moments as your middle voice. Not throughout the piece, I wouldn't show it all the time. Sometimes just you know, put it in a shade. So, let us go once again from the very beginning of the piece right now, try to make, trying to make the, ma the most of what the left hand can do as a turmoil and to have the sufficient speed in the right hand on all of those runs. But still stay in the tempo you have, just don't expand the melodies. Thank you. Bravo. Very, very good. Does it help now already? Do you feel that your emotional state or let's say the emotions inside of music, they are getting uh, some new colors? Mm -hmm. Because I hear it already. I just want you to also hear it. Okay. Do you hear it too? Yeah, I think uh, there is so much like, tension. Tension is much a good word. Thank you, it's important. And for tension, you need attention. So, um, one more thing is, while we are at that already, also think, you know, sometimes you can play pa-pam, pa-pam, 
the next time when you are going to the B. You can play it even faster. Pa -pam, pa -pam. It will always have a new color. Experiment with the timing of how you play these octaves. Because it's one kind of character here. It's a different kind of character. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of characters still in between. You see, the faster you will play this, the more exciting it would get to listen to. Because obviously, just because of the jump, you know, it's the very same kind of method. Maybe he is even, maybe even it's intentional that he quotes the 111 here. I don't know. <laughs> but maybe. Okay, so instead of playing all the time, think. How can you alter that? How can you change that to make it even more exciting next time? Okay? Yeah. So, let us go to the middle section right now, where you are obviously finally reaching kind of the agreement with your own emotions and entering the piano section. I want you only to play the right hand for me here. Okay. Yes, please. <laughs> obviously ready for my next task for you is to see which notes are written higher or going up way and which notes are written lower and going downwards. I want you to use this for your microdynamics. Every time when we perform romantical music we have to aim to make the music to sound like you are singing and especially here when you have the piano it sounds like it's a singing melody already. So, to make it more exciting and more colorful, you have to think about how those notes are connecting between each other. Because if you are just playing every, uh, every octave with the same attacker, it doesn't really remind on singing, however amount of uh, pedal you are using. But if you think of this as a melody being performed with two hands, which I would obviously want you to, to try now, Try this out, it would sound like we already quoted two concerto of Rachmaninoff today. Bravo, very, very good. Try now to make excessive microdynamics. If you see that you are falling from Do dies to Sol dies, make the fourth down worth of diminuendo. By the way, when I am telling you do dies or cis or C sharp, what is the system in Czech Republic that you are using? Cis. Cis. Okay, so sorry, so I will change it. So basically from cis to gis, you would make to have, uh, you have to make the fourth of decrescendo and then for it further from the downward Crescendo, crescendo, three. Try this out. Excuse me, for me, for my computer, it almost sounded the very same way. Try to make more of that. Make the louder note and the way more softer note. Very good, Daria. This is very nice. How do you like it? It sounds like singing. Would you now try to repeat this to aim for the very same kind of microdynamics when you are again playing in octaves? Use pedal, don't play left hand. Don't make this to be the loud note. 
Is the footage going down? Yes, so you then can again. Brava. Very good. Okay. Scriabin, as well as Rachmaninoff, as many other composers of that era, they took inspiration from Chopin. And Chopin is the very first, I guess, composer who said, who blatantly spoke about the piano being a singing instrument. Himself, he had a very beautiful singing voice, and with his teacher, they always practiced with singing in the first place, because before trying to aim to recreate the singing sounds on the piano. Mm -hmm. So this is why many of the composers who created those beautiful melodies after Chopin's living time, should it be Liszt was inspired by him, look at what Brahms wrote, look at what Rachmaninoff, Scrab, and many of those composers like Korngold or so on, they were all inspired by this singing ability of the piano. If you would be to sing now, which I'm not going to ask of you, sing an octave higher, uh, sing a, a scale, your voice would ask you to make more and more tension, thus more and more loud with each note. This is what makes uh, our voice to sound like voice, you know. <laughs> we cannot make the scale upwards and not make the diminuendo. So what composers do to recreate the singing habits of the piano, they do the exactly same way when they are doing the melody going up and melody going down. Also the crescendo and diminuendo. This way they are sounding like the voice of human beings. So this is why I asked you Obviously when we have to sing the fifth going down, we are relaxing our voice. So relax the sound of the piano. Okay, so this is one of the aims to think about. The second aim being the long notes. This is also something of the acoustics here, which is important to take into consideration. Every time when you have a long note, immediately after you have taken this note, the piano starts decreasing in the sound. You must with your ear listen to how much sound already have disappeared and with the remainder of the sound, play the following note. Otherwise, you are to have an accent. It is already not the same sound. It is already not the same sound as it was when I spoke the first time. And now you can barely hear it. So, when you continue the line, you have to catch with your ear how much did you decrease and then play here. And then, and so on. Always be sure that you don't start with a fresh new sound, because you are then to have an accent which you didn't deserve and you didn't want to. Okay? Would you start again from the very same melody, now listening to both the microdynamical connections and to the long disappearing notes? With left hand or with just with right hand, no left hand, please. Yet, thank you so much. Yes, so you see. From what I could hear right now, because obviously the computer cannot give me 100% of what was there, but you have managed, for example, here a beautiful diminuendo, a beautiful start on the E. It was a little bit of a struggle before for me, but here I already could clearly hear that you made the mm -hmm. best effort you could. Then, every time when you are playing the melodies like these, despite the tempo and despite the rhythm that you are using, always aim for one continuous crescendo instead of or so this doesn't happen practice a little bit slower and even for me it helps very much when with my free hand this time is the left hand i'm painting the melody together i don't know whether it helps for everyone but i like it kind of taking my left hand 
to make the same movement I want the sound to do. Would you try it out, whether it can be used as a method for you? Yes. Just from here. And then move your left finger along while you play the right hand. Like octaves in two hands? No. The left hand. Just take the finger and move it just like I did. Moving up? Just, yes, just up, like I do right now. You see? I'm moving my finger. I, so can, goes... I can't see you. Oh, I'm very sorry. Maybe it's because of the small screen. But you see, when I was yeah. playing, I was moving my finger all the time higher up and higher up. I do it all the time when I practice those kind of octave jumps that most of the time will cause me to make accents. So I you just lift yeah. fingers more? No, I don't lift fingers. I use my left finger to give me a reference of movement. Oh. I, know, I know how crazy it sounds. I, I, I don't think that somebody else does this as a part of my students. <laughs> but when I play the right hand, with the left hand I just paint. You know, like... Yeah, so you mean like... Yeah. Exactly, yeah. yes, but try to make one continuous movement, not like, uh, 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 because this would cause accents. Try to yeah. make your body make continuous movement. Bravo, I'll continue. For example, like this already, it takes your attention a little bit to the flow into one direction, and then you have a more beautiful melody without those accents. Okay, good tip, thank you. I know how crazy it looked like. I know how crazy it looked like. It, it took us some time to understand each other, didn't it? Yeah, but yeah. it's just because, it, you see, I take the references to how I play from singing, from moving, from dancing, from many other ways of understanding how the flow goes. You know, when we, for example, when we do something like this, inside of our body, we feel the flow. If we want to have the same flow in the music, yeah. Why not to move a little bit together? Okay. It Why makes sense. I can, I can try to practice like this. You see, because when we teach smallest kids, first of all, to understand the rhythm, what we are asking them to do, to clap or to rhythmically walk, just because yeah. they know how to do these things. So they mm -hmm. take the reference from there and the rhythm just gets sense. Yes. So with this all being said, I think that most important two tasks that you have to fulfill here is that in the right hand you would always have the melody to give you the right amount of excitement of drama if you are to play you have to be sure that this sounds like a like an entire struggle of the world that you put on your shoulders i'm quoting here the atlas um, do you know the song the song Atlas uh, by Schubert. I don't really remember who, who made the text. Was it Rellstab or was it Heine or whoever it was? But this Atlas says, uh, my name is Atlas and I'm carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders. Yes. So it's important that you carry this weight up and then get all the time beaten down. So you are again starting and again get beaten down. You know, it's an entire struggle of the world that you carry on your shoulders all the time. In the middle section, you would have beautiful singing melody that may sound a little bit like some echo or some, you know, some soul, but not really a human being, um, just a shade of the melody because it's a piano and because of how interesting the harmonies here are all the time kind of surfacing above the earth, but not on the ground because of how he constructed the chords and the tonal plan here. And then in the left hand, all the time, you must aim to create the turmoil. It's actually some very, very dramatic art of Barcarolle that you are having in the left hand. When in the Barcarolle, all the time, you would try to do... up and down but in a singing voice and here you have also going up and going down all the time boiling like a kettle okay 
Okay, so those two things are the most important for the character of the piece to fulfill. So, and now let us go to the reprise. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very, very much. So here you can have the reference of your first uh, theme going in the exposition where you play it. You have used also more power, more tempo to go up. Don't try to make it more wasteful here. Is the drama. So try to keep the in tempo. Yes, exactly. And now help the triads, uh, try the, to make the left hand now to be also a helpful hand for the right one. Ah, uh -huh. and don't take too much tempo before entering the new bar. It's a different kind of excitement. Yes, exactly. Yes, continue. Continue, please. Very good. Very good. Nice. Thank you. Okay. where I wanted you to stop but you were playing so excitedly that yeah, I, I felt really I, sorry I, <laughs> I, I, I felt very very sorry for for calling you at that time because how do you feel right now are you more exciting now more excited um, I feel more relaxed because I'm on the uh, other part of the piece and I have more energy because when I play the whole piece um, especially in, in third page, uh, I lose my energy. So maybe when I this... start from the middle, it's it's easier. Of maybe course, way. but Daria, maybe this is also a chance for you to revisit the second half of this uh, of this piece and use the piano to relax your hands to again gain the power, because yeah. you were you were putting so much pressure because obviously you will be tired. But now, when you aim for a piano, when you aim for the singing sound, you have another task which don't take so much of your hand power. Okay. So this is also a way of strategizing. So you can keep the most precious thing uh, for the end. So I would suggest for you to do two tricks, uh, which I obviously don't do all the time, but I really want you to understand that when you arrive to ta ta ra ra di di in this place you must have the whole excitement of the world to get this i would suggest for you to use these three bars from this to here to make a little bit of accelerando this is what usually pianists do to make more accumulation of 
turmoiling sounds here. Basically, it's <laughs> you are stopping it right now, don't. Go further over time. Okay, so... Can we start from... This melody, by the way, it really sounds as an explanation of going I'm down with I'm your sorry, emotions. I'm still, I'm still reading the notes. I, I don't play by memory, so maybe it's um, slower because of that, but I can try. For this, for this you are way too good. Thank you. Let's go. Um. Just one bar before. Yes. Brava! And then just continue. <laughs> from the beginning, the second quarter, the third quarter, and then just accumulate those sounds in between. <laughs> just don't stop there too much. I think this accelerando now was sufficient. You can have a million of different ways of doing this accelerando in a perfect way for you. So just search and you will find it. For me, it always helped to do a big diminuendo in this bar before. I was giving myself an opportunity of relaxing the hands with this, but also I was showing the audience how desperate I was. When I started again in the reprise, I felt like, okay, this is my very last chance to show my emotions, to show what I'm capable of. You know, if we are speaking about this as some kind of the um, of emotional symbol, mm -hmm. then here at this point you are the most excited. You want to prove something for the world, which didn't allow you to do this before. So you go with your very, very last power. What do you expect? To win. You expect to win. Exactly, you expect to win. What happens with you? I'm struggling, but... The melody is going down. I keep going. Yes, but the melody is going down here, and for me, the most exciting chord here is this one. Because it's not a positive chord to think about. It doesn't sound like you are winning. But here I'm trying one more time. Even more up and then yeah, yeah so we'll and be like this. Am yes. I winning or not? <laughs> you see that is the thing. That is always a question of interpretation. But for me, no piece by Scrabbin is a complete win. Mm -hmm. Even in the most exciting moments, um, I sometimes see, you know, uh, for example like Fantasia opus twenty eight, I think was it mm -hmm. or uh, I think it was Opus 28, or the third, no, the fourth sonata being third. I don't remember the Opus, but the Fantasia of him is one of the most exciting pieces that I have ever listened um, of him, and it sounds so positive at the majority of the places there, but still you keep the effect that it's more of the sentimental thing of looking at something positive, saying, yes, it is positive somewhere where I am not a part of. And you kind of are a spectator of somebody else's win. Scrabble mm -hmm. was never a very, a very happy person in his life. Read his biography, you will find some moments there that would make you cry. Mm. So and maybe this is also one of the pieces that are the best to use as an introduction of a person to Scrabble, or maybe as an introduction of a person to the auto portrait in music altogether. Yes. So, I am getting calls from the people who want to join the third session already, and this is also a good sign for us to finish the lesson today. 
Daria, that was the very first time I worked with you. I really hope that we will meet somewhere live when the situation happens. But I had fun working with you and thank you very, very much for being so open-minded about those ideas about musical symbolism. Actually, I, I take the inspiration from my mother about this all the time. She always looks at the score and she says, look, he is not happy here. <laughs> And, and I always question myself, like, how can you see those things? But uh, even if I could take from her like a little bit of that inspiration of trying to guess composer's emotions and trying to guess what he wanted to say there, I think I have already made myself question the piece. Uh, obviously, they are always more than just one right interpretation. But when you start questioning, you are coming to the answers that are suiting you the best. And if you are capable of presenting those answers, you find to the audience, um, the audience not doesn't listen to that as a piece of virtuoso performance. They, they, mm. they see that it's yeah. kind of a little a stamp of somebody else's life, a little a little poem that you recreated for them, uh, something of a little drama. We uh, we we like somebody else's dramas all the time. Mm. And That's I think why we go to listen to concerts and. Like, uh, like shows and this stuff. Exactly. We want to get excited all the time. So I wish yeah, you that every time when you play this Scraven or any piece that resembles, that reminds you on this kind of emotional turmoil, that you would use the tricks that we spoke about today. Yeah. Actually, I call them tricks. That yeah. I, I would rather like to call them uh, the rules of... Mm -hmm performing, you know, thinking about the timing, thinking how much time do you need for the passage to really sound exciting, thinking about how this passage sounds when it's faster or when it's slower than you perform. So you can create different ways of expressing yourself just by altering the tempo, by altering the timing, by altering your dynamics and so on. You will get right. a new picture all the time. And just then you would have to use your imagination and your um, experience to see what of those experiments are to be used in particular piece. Thank you so much. Cool. You really helped me. Thank you.